my name is Tyler Campbell, and I am a husband, a father, a coffee roaster, and I really enjoy exercising. So I grew up in a pretty normal home. I was adopted, which I've known as long as I can remember. My parents never really withheld that information from me or anything like that. I've never really felt like that has had a great impact on me. My family's kind of always been my family. I had a pretty easy childhood growing up. I had a really good relationship with both my parents. School wasn't too tough. Went through high school pretty easily, homeschooled, graduated and then went to college and did well in college. And then as I just got older and started working in the service industry, um, instead of maybe dealing with problems and issues as they came up, I started to drink as I was introduced to alcohol. It kind of became like a way to just avoid problems. Just over time, I just drank more and more until it became abusive. It led to, I mean, emotional damage between me and my parents and hurt a lot of relationships and was hurting me physically, but eventually it led to a DUI, which kind of was the point where I didn't stop drinking after the DUI immediately. It's not like I quit cold turkey or anything, but that was the point where my alcohol abuse became so prevalent that it was something that I knew I had to deal with. It made me realize that I had to change. I took my reliance on alcohol as a substance and a means to cope with things, and then I just started exercising and doing CrossFit. Um, and kind of became obsessive about it. what you have to be. <laughs> obsession without precision is pointless. I think it's part of obsession, being precise. You need that extra degree of detail. It's not like a, I don't think that's a choice when you're obsessive about something. Like you are going to get that detail. Like you don't obsess over things like coffee and not understand that a coffee being raised at a thousand meters above sea level is going to be less dense than one raised at 2,000 meters above sea level. Or that, you know, African pea berry coffee is a genetic mutation and a defect that was considered imperfect. I think one of the best pieces of advice you can give someone who has an addictive personality is to realize, like, whatever it is you're hooked on, if it's not good for you, you have to replace it with something that's good for you. If you're addicted to soda, I'm sorry, but you have to replace it with water. If you're addicted to junk food, eventually you're gonna have to replace it with something. You have to just, it, it's not really, you can't just quit something if you have an addictive personality, I don't think, it has to be replaced. Like I didn't replace alcohol with water. I replaced it with something that didn't mix with it. <laughs> so instead of directly replacing what I was drinking, I kind of took an oil to water approach. Like you can't drink every night excessively and do CrossFit well. And I've known Catherine since I was, uh, we've had this debate before, but since I was about 14 or 15. So I've known her for almost 14 years now. And we dated in high school. And then we broke up when I went to college. We got back together uh, when I moved back to Albany about a year after my DUI. Um, and just kind of dated. Um, and got to know each other better and better. Got married about two years ago. So we've been married for about two years and she is technically my boss and also my best friend and one of my workout partners. Probably my only workout partner now actually. Um, she's been amazing and supportive and really helpful to me as far as like separating some of the obsessive, goal-driven uh, nature that I have, which can be good, but also helping me rein that in and pull that back and learn to develop more relationally and like understanding that uh, meaningful conversations really matter. And my daughter is 18 months old, our daughter, and she is just an absolute ball of joy. I mean, you can't even keep up with her anymore. She's running so fast all the time. Her name is Mira and she's just, 
it's really hard to put into words how much a person like that means. I don't really know if it's like, if it's possible to communicate like how much having a child changes your life. But it's just been one of like the greatest gifts ever. And you know, there's that cliche scene in The Grinch where his heart grows multiple sizes. Um, and like, that's what, it, that's what it feels like, but it's not once, it's like every day. It's like a repetitive sequence of your heart growing over and over again. And it's borderline painful, but you know, it's, it's, a, it's an insane experience. And it just, you know, it's scary because you're shaping a human being and a person, but it's, it's amazing because they just, that little person loves you so much and you love them so much. It's just a, it's really perplexing, honestly. Um, yeah, but I don't really know. I, I don't have like direct words or adjectives or verbs to describe how it feels. It's just a, it's just a continuous experience that like develops and grows and it's making me a better person. The reason that I work a lot um, and that I'm very invested and tend to be very, maybe a little bit too passionate about certain things, um, maybe a little bit too obsessive is just because I want to be the best that I can be every day for my wife and my daughter. I don't want to be 60 and unable to play with grandkids that I might have one day or be able to keep up with my daughter um, in 10 years because I'm out of shape and I don't want to be a slob and be a poor reflection of my incredibly hardworking wife who it's hard enough to keep up with her. <laughs> um, you know, I don't, I don't want to be any less than the best that I can be because those two people mean so much that they're worth it. They're worth the effort and the hard work that it takes to, to come in and, you know, work 10 hour days and work out for an hour and a half and then leave. You know, that's, that's okay if like I am providing, I am physically healthy and I am getting the time that I need to spend with them to continue to develop our relationships and stay a healthy family. Grab your Dory book. Where's your Dory book? Where's your Dory book? That was our short documentary, Obsession and Precision. Huge shout out and thank you to Tyler Campbell for letting us into your life for just a few days. If you yourself are interested in learning how to do that and tell stories and testimonials for you, your business, and your nonprofit, be sure to stay subscribed. On this channel, we're going to be covering how to um, go through the pre-production, how to film it, do the production of it, and then also how to edit. We're gonna cover the three stages of production on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, stay subscribed, and more content is coming your way.